I've been using the new 24-70 f2.8 GM Mark II lens for almost a month now. Shot a wedding, real estate video, two surgeries and some reportage shoots. And also I've been using the 24-70 f4 for the last 6 or some years. And I know this lens top to bottom. The price difference is almost 2.5 times, so let's find out is the new GM lens that much better than the old Sony Zeiss lens? And is the G Master lens really worth the money? Let's go! My user experience with 24-70 f2.8 GM Mark II lens has been great. It's relatively compact and lightweight, the autofocus is the best in class, manual focusing is very precise and slow enough, when on the 24-70 f4 I always find it to be a bit jittery and too fast. Sharpness, distortion and vignette is also great, we'll discuss it in more detail in a few moments. The minimum focusing distance also surprised me in a good way, so all in all the 24-70 GM lives up to all of my expectations. So now let's have a closer look at those two lenses and compare those. So let's start off with the build quality and materials of GM lens. We have a ton of different switches in here. For instance, the smooth and tight switch to switch between smooth and tight zoom, uh, as you can see in this example. Also here we have a switch to click or declick your aperture, so it will go in steps for photo mode or without any steps, very smoothly for video. One more switch is an iris lock, so you can lock your iris at a certain value or in auto mode, so you cannot switch it accidentally a very nice addition as well. Here we have two customizable focus hold buttons for your vertical and horizontal modes and a pretty regular AF MF switch. The zoom ring is really smooth and well dampened and no complaints here of course and the focusing ring is also very very smooth and a joy to use. The lens comes with a lens hood and it's a pretty cool lens hood to be honest we have a special door so if you have a polarizing filter you can use this sliding door to adjust your polarization effect or VND filter and all in all I do like this lens hood. It comes with a front cap and of course with a rear cap. 82mm filter threads and of course this lens comes with a weather ceiling and a weather ceiling gasket on the back as you can see in this example. With all G Master lenses you do get a very nice bag and a carrying strap. The bag is really cool and I do enjoy using those bags on my belt. Now let's have a closer look at 24-70 Sony Zeiss lens f4. We have a focus ring and a zoom ring and that's it. No other elements of uh, control on this lens at all and it's been in some troubles as you can see here but it also has an optical stay shot built in and a 67 millimeter threat. All in all it's a decently made lens. In terms of size and weight difference we have more than 250 grams of weight difference and it's substantial and you can see the difference in dimensions and even though that the G Master Mark II is smaller than the previous version it is still pretty bulky and big. So now guys it's time to have a look at distortion, vignette and sharpness of this lens at 24 millimeter. As you can see the distortion is very very minimal, we have just a little bit of barrel distortion as far as I can tell and the uh, sharpness is also pretty good from f2.8 and it gets razor sharp by f4. In terms of vignette we do get a slight vignette at f2.8 but it goes away completely by f4. And here's the Sony Zeiss at f4 24 millimeter, it does have some vignette at this uh, aperture and also it is kind of a bit greenish compared to the G Master lens as you can see here. And also in terms of uh, center sharpness they are pretty much comparable, almost identical, but keep in mind that the GM is at f2.8 and the corners are still sharper than on the Zeiss lens. So here it is at 35 millimeter GM lens, also we can see a little bit of vignette as f2.8, but in terms of distortion it's also doing a pretty good job. It's just turned to a pincushion, very slight distortion. And as you can see it's very sharp from f2.8. The Sony Zeiss lens at 35 millimeter also displays a lot of vignette at f4, at f5.6 it almost goes away, and let's compare those two lenses side by side. Once again a bit greener, uh, the image from the Sony Zeiss lens and the corners are softer than on the GM with f2.8. That's impressive. And also I've thrown in to this comparison my Sony FE 35mm f1.8 lens. And from this example you can see that this lens is a lot sharper at f2.8 than the f4 Sony Zeiss at 35mm. But still the GM lens is the sharpest from all three. 
Now let's switch to 50mm, almost no distortion here, a little bit of vignette as usual, it's almost all the time like so. So at a 4 at all focal length the vignette goes away completely and also it's very sharp at 50mm even in the corners. The Sony's eyes displays also minimal distortion and let me tell you at 50mm the Sony's eyes is not that soft but still softer. Then at 70mm the same situation, almost no distortion, which is good, very slight vignette at f2.8 and in terms of sharpness it's very good wide open. So let's compare it to the Sony Zeiss lens and as you can see it also suffers from a bit of vignette at f4 and let's compare the images, they're more or less comparable but still the G Master is sharper. The minimal focus and distance of this lens is only 21 cm at the wide end and 30 cm at the tight end, whereas Sony Zeiss lens is only 40 cm in terms of minimal focus and distance. So here they are side by side at 24 mm and as you can see Sony Zeiss is far far away from the Sony G Master. Let's have a look at 35 mm, it's also also a pretty dramatic difference guys. And now let's add in this little beauty, Sony FE 35mm f1.8 prime lens. It's that much smaller than the GM lens and it is well known for the good minimal focus and distance and it's even a bit closer than the GM lens. They are pretty much in the same position let me say. And here it is at 70mm, yes Sony's eyes is getting better by 70mm, so if you want to shoot macro with this lens you have to go to 70mm, but still GM is ahead. And if you really want to kind of do macro photography with the Sony's eyes lens you can use the afters, here is one at plus 4 strength and it gets softer image but really closer than it was. So now let's have a look at the bokeh difference, as you can see f4 versus f2.8 at 24mm, here it is at 35mm with Sony FE 35mm in the middle and here it is at 70mm, the bokeh is much creamier and softer with the GM lens. And since we're talking about bokeh, here it is at 24mm, the quality of bokeh is ok in my opinion. The circles are not perfectly round, we have some cat's eye shape towards the corners and all in all even at 70mm the bokeh could be better in my opinion. It is pretty soft and uh, there is no texture inside of bokeh balls, no chromatic aberrations but you know it's pretty usual in my opinion. So now let's have a look at the night shots, as you can see we have the settings down, uh, you can read those and here it is with the GM lens, it's more than ok at 24mm and the size <laughs> lens is just very very poor because of the minimal focus and distance and not a lot of blades in it and overall the bokeh on the size lens is just poor let me say. At 35mm we do see the bokehs are getting a bit bigger with the GM lens and with the Zeiss lens <laughs> you see those bokeh balls guys by yourselves. And here is the Sony FE 35mm at f1.8, it's much brighter and I do prefer this bokeh a ton, so it's a winner in this category. And here is the difference between the latitude and also 7 bladed aperture, 9 bladed and 11 bladed aperture difference. So at 70mm we do get a lot of creamy and oval bokehs with the GM lens, it's good enough in my opinion and with the Zeiss lens we do get those meh, kind of strange weird not really circular shaped bokehs with a lot of texture inside not the best bokeh. And this is what happens when we close down the aperture with the GM lens, the circles stay kind of circular more or less and here's what happens with the GM lens at 24mm when we close down the aperture, it's also showing pretty nice result in my opinion. And this shot is shot with the 35mm f1.8 fe lens, you can see how bright it is and how much bokeh we have at the right. Here is with the 35mm G Master at f2.8, it's much darker and the bokeh balls are not that big and the f4 Sony Zeiss, uh, guys it's it's not, not great, <laughs> not great. Here it is at 70mm with a GM lens, we have some bokehs and pretty much enough latitude and here it is with the Sony Zeiss, uh, a bit dark I see and the bokeh balls are so so. And finally let's have a look at the sun stars and coma smearing, to be honest I don't see any coma smearing with both of those lenses and in terms of sun stars the GM lens is also great 
this is at 24 millimeters zoomed in 500 percent and this is at 70 millimeters zoomed in at 200 percent and as you can see the sun stars are great with a gm lens and no coma smearing whatsoever but i doubt you'll be shooting stars with those lenses so here comes the autofocus test uh, the fastest uh, settings in terms of speed and sensitivity and as you can see guys both lenses do a pretty decent job but sometimes they do hunt a little bit before just grabbing the focus at 24 millimeter not the best result in my opinion but all in all almost all wide angle lenses suffer from this problem and let me show you at 70 millimeters with the sony size lens it's doing good in my opinion considering that this lens is very very old and i've dropped it a couple of times it tracks my eyes just perfectly and here is the sony g master lens also instant snappy reliable <laughs> good out of focus guys and as you can see it also tracks my eye even at 70 millimeter wide open f2.8 so good result also guys the sony zeiss f4 lens has built-in optical image stabilization which is really handy and i do feel the difference between uh, optically stabilized lens and not optically stabilized lens we see that the static shot is a bit more stable with the optically stabilized lens and if we switch to 70 millimeter it's more or less the same but the sony zeiss f4 has a touch more stability in terms of focus breathing both lenses do show focus breathing at 24 millimeter it's nothing too bad but it is there at 35 millimeter both lenses as well show substantial focus breathing but it's not too crazy as the g master f1.4 lens for instance i mean 35 millimeter and at 70 millimeter it is decent not too crazy so nice performance let me say in terms of flaring sony g master is winning at 24 millimeter we see less saturated flares and all in all less ghosting more contrast on sony g master lens so in terms of flaring it is winning even though the flares are pretty strong in my opinion and at 70 millimeter we do see the huge difference in contrast so the sony g master has better coatings better glass better structure let me say so all in all in terms of flares it is winning in terms of chromatic aberrations, they do exist in both lenses, and if you stop down one stop, they kind of disappear completely. I saw much worse chromatic aberrations, so in this term, both lenses show good performance at 70mm and also at 24mm, zoomed in 500%, we can see that the chromatic aberrations do exist but it's not a huge problem in my opinion and the price difference is huge $900 versus $2300 more than two and a half times so here is my thought we can buy 24 to 70 f4 35 millimeter f18 and 85 millimeter f18 and we'll have extra 50 bucks and for the same price we can get one 24 to 70 gm f2.8 mark ii in my opinion the three lenses kit is much more versatile and you can get outstanding shots with the 35 and 85 prime lenses no offense to gm lens but it is very expensive or you can pick two tamrons 17 to 28 f2.8 and 35 to 150 f2 f2.8 and you'll get a huge range from 17 millimeter to 150 millimeter at f2.8 the same aperture as the 24 to 70 f2.8 but you'll need of course to pay extra 400 dollars but then you'll get extra 35 millimeter f2 lens kind of built into the tamron 35 to 150 so in my opinion this is also a much better investment and do not forget guys that there is a ton of 24 to 70 lenses on the market for much less money the sigma 24 to 70 f2.8 dgd and art for instance to conclude sony 24 to 70 f2.8 gm version 2 is a lens without compromises it has almost zero flaws and outstanding performance throughout the range it's miles better than the 24 to 70 f4 lens but i'm still not a fan of 24 to 70 f2.8 look it's sometimes boring to me and i do prefer using fast prime lenses whenever it's possible and i only use my 24 to 70 f4 lens when there is no other option available like during wedding receptions and ceremonies concerts when i need to record an entire concert and take some different angles 
or during surgeries that I regularly shoot and I do need to get wetter and closer while recording without an ability to change lenses. But here's the thing, even if I had a 2040-70 f2.8 GM version 2 in my kit, I would use it in exactly the same fashion, picking prime lenses whenever I could, so at least to me and my style of shooting, I'm more than okay with 24-70 f4. But if you want to pick just one lens to film everything with it, 24-70 f2.8 GM version 2 is a very decent option, and I can highly recommend it if you have the budget for it. So what do you think guys? Is the GM lens really worth two and a half times more money or would you pick another lens or even lenses for $2300? Please share your thoughts in the comment section below. If you did enjoy this video, please smash the like and subscribe buttons and the notifications bell. See you in the next video guys. Take care. Bye.